Hello? Hello, Neo. Do you know who this is? Morpheus. Yes. I've been looking for you, Neo. I don't know if you're ready to see what I want to show you. But unfortunately, you and I have run out of time. They're coming for Hi you. guys. Welcome to Tactic Devs. In this video, we're going to be trying out ChatGPT. And what we're going to be doing in this video is we'll be trying to write code with this tool. So basically, you know, asking it questions or, you know, prompting it to write us some code. So for those who don't know, ChatGPT, GPT stands for Regenerative Pre-Trained Transformer. So this is a language model developed by OpenAI and it uses um, deep learning techniques to perform language processing tasks like text summarization, language translation, etc. It's been out there recently. It's been in the headlines recently and it has some good results, I guess. So let's get to it. So here we have a simple interface, very minimal. And what we do here is we prompt it by simply, you know, typing a question or just some text. All right. So what I'll be trying to ask it, I'll be trying to ask it a number of um, questions pertaining to, you know, how to code ABCD or how to achieve something in a programming language. Uh, mostly it will be C sharp, but we are going to try some other languages as, as well. So let's try the common one. How to center a div <laughs> in HTML. How to center a div in HTML. If you've never asked Google this question, I'm afraid you've never gone through programming 101. Wow, quite impressive, right? So here we have to send a div element in HTML. You can use the margin auto style like this. And we have some code here. So we have a div a style defined with 200, height 100, and we have the margin set to auto. This will, this div will be centered horizontally and vertically. Wow. All right, impressive. So basically we can just copy this code and paste it. For now, I guess we can do that. But let's, you know, let's keep on. Um, let's say, write me, okay. How do I really, how do I make an HTTP request in C sharp. Requesting, let's try it. Requesting um, data from uh, what API from a face Facebook API. All right, there we go. How to make an HTTP request in C Sharp to request data from Facebook API. You can use the client, the HTTP client class. This is very impressive. Now, I guess chat GPT is useful if you have, you know, an understanding of the language you're trying to, you know, have it help you write. But if you don't understand or if you don't understand the core principles, it's kind of not useful. You know what I mean? You know, it's like trying to compose music 
if you don't have if you don't understand the theory of music kind of so here we have you know our namespace defined we have an object of http client right then we set the base uri which is you know facebook and there's that domain you have the access token that's impressive it understands that you need an access token then we have you know the string right with our you know fields and the like what's impressive is that it actually makes the the request and understands that the data will be returned as json get the data read it as a string then here we actually deserialize that data into json so it's very very impressive very impressive okay that's good so um how do i let me try to ask it a question i had a challenge with mm, let's see um and we can try different frameworks actually okay so how do i do the same in javascript and then i'll try that in python okay so how do i make an HTTP request in JavaScript. And let's see the difference. Let's see if we get similar results or similar logic. from what i see it's kind of similar it's structured you know the code is the logic flows in a similar manner it's just different because you know c sharp does it in an object oriented manner very object oriented manner so does you know this but here we we do have a fallback a callback function so we have an object right and we use this object to you know um, set the uri the url and we simply say when this is loaded you know we have a function here and if the status is 200 meaning the data was retrieved or the request was successful we get that data and we change it to json else you know do nothing then we send so we predefine everything then we you know call the uh, we, we send we actually you know uh, send the request very similar very similar flow interesting so let's try um let's try the same question in um python it's kind of slow i guess uh probably the servers are overwhelmed with you know a lot of people trying to use this two all right it seems python has less code if i'm not mistaken let's try so here it's kind of the same logic again so we have you know uri url it has a method which gets the data and the response is returned we check for the status code and you know we simply call the json method and we have our data um, in json else you know don't do anything very impressive and you know minimal code here so if we try to say in python in, in python from a facebook api
again, Python requires the the least amount of code here to, to you know to make that request. So and actually this shows you that you know languages may be different, you know, in the in the way they are designed, but it's pretty much the same thing. It's pretty much understandable. If you look at this and this, you can pretty much simply understand what's going on. Very impressive. Let's try um, Java. Let's see the language that's the, the most, you know, complicated. So let's say Java. I would say Java might be, might require more lines of code. I think so. Let's see. I knew it. Look at the, the amount of namespaces you need. There we go. Wow. Yeah, I guess Java requires more lines of code. So you have to create and build. It seems the the Java libraries have been over engineered to you know to allow us to use the the classes they define. So you have a builder, you know, the builder, you create the object, then you have the object, then you, why can't you just simply, you know, call the constructor and have everything in in a single place? Wow. I know for, for Java lovers out there, don't be offended, but it does definitely require more lines of code to make a simple HTTP request. So what else can we try? Hmm. What other languages? PHP. No, no, no. Let's try Ruby on Rails. I actually met somebody who told me that they code in Ruby on Rails. So I was like, what is Ruby on Rails? <laughs> then later on, I actually found out it was a programming language. Interesting. So let's go Ruby on Rails. Let's see. All right, Ruby and Rails, not bad. Actually, this is the first time I'm actually looking at you know Ruby and Rails code. Okay, the syntax is very easy to understand. I can see they don't use uh, curly braces. Okay, it's um, understandable. All right. Okay, so let's try out something more complicated. Let's try out something like how do I how do I code a server? A saver. How do I make a server in C sharp. 
C sharp Morgan Freeman Hi there <laughs> How do I make a server in C sharp Let's see if it will try to understand what that means To create Okay there we go Wow, okay. So that's your client. All right. Kind of easy. We only need one namespace. And okay, makes sense. Let's do the same in Java. JavaScript. To create, a, to create a server in JavaScript, you can use the HTTP module, which is part of the Node.js runtime. Here's a simple example, okay? So I think JavaScript is very, you know, clear and concise. So you have an object here, server, and you handle the incoming requests. So you have the, uh, the request passed down through the, the parameters here. Very interesting. Then you simply listen on a certain port. Okay, that's impressive. So guys, I guess that's it for this video. Um, I think I'll be trying out this too once more. So for now, that's it. And thanks for watching. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you find the content on this channel useful. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next one.